Hey, everybody. Happy New Year. Welcome to a new episode of Mike Adelic. I'm your host, Mike Brancatelli. This is Mike Adelic. It is the year 2018. Welcome to the future. Pretty cool, right? 2018. Um, well, I don't know. We've yet to find out. Could be a good one. Could be a shit one. I hope it's going to be a good one. 2017 uh, was a mixed bag for me. Uh, personally, it was pretty shitty. I guess professionally, it was pretty good. Thanks to you guys. Um, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what 2018 has in store. Uh, this episode is with my good friend Ed Liu of Psychedelic Milk. We reflect on 2017, talk about uh, what we've learned, and um, make some predictions for what 2018 will hold. And as you all know, I am kicking off my new year with a trip down into the depths of the Amazon to live and work uh, at an ayahuasca retreat, um, something that I've given a lot of thought to over this past year, and I'm pretty excited about it, pretty excited about it. Um, I went to this uh, place last year. And uh, I came back having had one of the most profound experiences I've ever had in my life. And this is a, a strange thing, you know. I, I've been on this kind of journey, I guess, um, to what, you know, for what. It's a it's a difficult sort of thing to unpack for a lot of people especially a lot of people that I interact with in my life. Um, I don't know, maybe I haven't really communicated this so well on the podcast before, but uh, I'm sort of not necessarily attached to any particular kind of group or affiliated with any sort of circle of uh, band of merry pranksters or hippies or vagabond travelers and peyote smokers or, you know, I'm, I'm pretty solo. Uh, and uh, a lot of my friends would fall into the category of what we would call sort of, you know, mainstream type of people. I have a lot of friends that um, work kind of normal sorts of jobs and don't talk about eating mushrooms on live broadcasts like I do. So <laughs> uh, it's interesting to navigate in both of these worlds, you know, to walk in both of these worlds and um, to explain to people what this sort of spiritual type of journey or whatever you want to call it, because I don't really know what it is. It's It's more of the best way I can describe it is that there is this alluring pull or this alluring call um, that's saying to me, follow this path, go down this road, uh, learn about these things. And you know, why, <laughs> you know, um, I don't know, you know, there's, there's, if there's one thing that I know for sure, it's that any time that I attempt to try and solidify some sort of reason or answer for something, it's a, it could be a trap. I could get stuck in it because there's no certainty really. There, there's only this sort of intuition you know I, I i i was about to say vague intuition but it's not vague it's sort of clear but you don't want to get drunk on the clearness of the path and of the vision uh you know and, and what i mean by that is if i'm 
you know, having this vision in my mind of maybe some things that I want to accomplish or things that I want to do, um, Terrence McKenna would, would, would describe this in terms of having a psychedelic experience. He would say, you know, don't give in to the astonishment. And I can kind of relate to that because it's like not giving in to the magnitude of the power in the power of your ability to envision um, a manifestation for your own reality. You know, it's like, whoa, you can get really high and really drunk on, on that vision where you're like, yeah, this is the thing. This is what I'm supposed to do. This is why I'm here. I'm always weary of, of being certain in that, but I'm confident in moving in that direction and leaning towards that way. And, you know, who knows, you know, maybe if I was more confident in leaning into that, maybe I would be, I don't know, further along in my development or, or something, but it, it is what it is. So, so that's, these are my plans for 2018. I'm going to be gone in, um, January, end of January, January 20th. To April 20th. I won't be back until April 20th. But uh, like I said, I'm going to still put out podcast episodes. But, uh, but I will be living a radically different life than the life that I'm currently living right now, right? And this life that I'm going to be living is, is a life that I've, I've been yearning for. You know, I, I envision myself I dream of of living sort of in a a world that maybe doesn't exist, you know. Um, but reading a lot of Joseph Campbell, reading a lot of uh, stories of myths and uh, stories of indigenous uh, folks and tribes and and communities and and those sorts of things of the of our past, the sort of hunter gatherer style nature of of people. Maybe I'm romanticizing it a little bit, but I know that there's an aspect of their culture that we could take some aspects of, we can learn from, that we can apply into into our modern life today. And I don't know, maybe I'm on a quest to figure out what that is. Maybe I'll write a book. Maybe I'll have some kind of video course. Maybe I'll do a documentary. I'm not sure. All I know is that I don't feel necessarily solidified in my position yet in terms of what it is that, you know, in terms of what my, um, well, I guess I want to make sure that, that I'm really qualified in, in order to produce material that's really uh, going to quench your thirst, you know, that's really, you know, you, you can really bite into and get a lot out of. Um, and that, that takes a lot of time. That takes a lot of work. But, uh, but maybe, maybe the path that I'm on isn't necessarily such a sort of intangible, mystical, ethereal, spiritual path, but maybe it's sort of an inward creative journey. You know, maybe it's getting back in touch with the person that I once was as this creative child that had sort of given it up. You know, um, when I was a kid, uh, I, I was very, very creative and, um, I, I would draw all the time. One of my favorite things to do was to draw. I, I would collect comic books, you know, comic books and movies and action figures um, were my thing. And X-Men comic books were my main thing. And I would really, I would love to draw like my own X-Men characters, you know, so I would create, I still have the books and stuff, you know, I, I still create, uh, similar stuff, but my, my level of drawing is a little bit more advanced than when I was, when I, when it, when it, when it was, when I was like 10, but when I was 10, it was pretty goddamn good. So, you know, a part of me is a little sad because it's like, wow, what, what, what could I have been if I had just stuck to those creative impulses? 
but what I, you know, what I did instead was I, um, you know, I, I got bullied when I was a kid and, um, instead of sort of standing firm in who I was when I was a child, I conformed, you know, I became who, who they wanted me to be. Um, I, I would say that that's probably one of the biggest regrets of my life, but I'm not sure if that's necessarily true because maybe I wouldn't have learned what I've learned now and, and had gone through what I've gone through in order to communicate what I'm communicating. So maybe there's some value in my experience, but I know that uh, for certain, conformity is a killer. You know, it's a disease. It really, it really, really is. Um, you know, I just, I remember being a kid and, you know, my father had lost his job and um, was out of work for a little while. And, you know, so we weren't able to necessarily afford like, you know, top of the line type stuff anymore. And, um, you know, so instead of, you know, I wasn't wearing Nikes, I was wearing ponies. You know, I wasn't wearing Adidas, I was wearing Avia. And in my, you know, wealthy, suburban, upper middle class, white town, uh, you know, kids uh, bullied you for that kind of stuff. You know, they, you know, your family's poor. <laughs> I remember, God, that line from Rick and Morty. I think it's in the the first episode of the first season of Rick and Morty, when uh, the the bully Frank is pulls out a knife on Morty and he goes, "Did you say my family's poor? Because we're not. We're rich." And then Rick freezes him. I just resonated with that line so much because it's so. That was something that was said to me when I was a kid. But. Uh, But yeah, I, you know, I feel, I feel like with this trip to Peru, um, with everything that's happened to me in the past year of 2017, as challenging it has been, my message here is that stay true, stay goddamn true to yourself, man, just for the sake of for the sake of, of of that zest of life, you know, for for that just euphoric pleasure that you get when you are in tune with your wave and you are surfing on your own, you know, cosmic frequency. You know, it's just all the heavens open up for you and all the angels, you know, sing your tune when you are performing at that level, you know, when you are riding your tune, when you're riding your frequency, when you are, you know, when you're waving your color into the, into the sky and you're dancing your dance, it's like, yeah, you know, I, I, I did a podcast, I think last podcast, I talked about a little bit about this, you know, conformity. It's just, if there's anything that's really a killer and a crusher of human souls, it's, it, it's conformity, groupthink, obedience, you know, um, it's diluting the well with, uh, poisonous group conformed ideologies and, uh, belief systems that, uh, you know, we don't want to be too weird. You know, we don't want to stray from the herd. We don't want to stand out, but we do, you do. That's exactly where the magic of your life lies is right there. You know, when you're doing something where other people go, I don't know about this person. They're kind of weird. They're kind of wacky. What are they doing? Who are they? Who do they think they are? Did you hear what they did about this thing? Yeah, did you hear about that? Yeah, I heard about that. 
oh yeah, they're kind of, what, what do you think about that? Yeah, they're going to kind of do a little weird thing, this person. Let them talk. Haters going to hate, right? Am I right? Rappers know. Rappers know. But that is, um, you know, it's such a pressure when you're a child. And, uh, you know, I remember succumbing to that pressure. And, um, you know, th that I look back in, 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 you know, that is a weakness that it took me a long time, 30 years or so to, to, to uh, get over. But, you know, I don't know if there's people out there that are listening, you know, if you're young and you're experiencing peer pressure and bullying and, you know, con you know, pulls to conform and to go along with the herd and to, you know, not to stand out and to, you know, fit in, to be cool, be cool. You know, what, what does that even mean? You know, it's like, what's cool? Some, some kind of cocktail of crap that some ad agency came up with to sell cigarettes or something you know it's like that's not cool it's it's cancer it's it's bullshit you know as you get older you really do it's just the something that comes along with life experience if you're lucky to have life experiences if you're, if you're brave enough to walk uh sort of uncomfortable paths and uncover uncomfortable truths you notice that there's a lot of bullshit in the world. You know, there's a lot of bullshit. Oh, should I do this? Should I wear my hair this way? Should I wear this thing? Whatever it is, whatever your thing is, you know, there's so much bullshit attached to it. And, you know, we some of, some of the stuff that's bullshit, it, you know, we still cling to because me telling you that it's bullshit, it's not going to change your mind. But maybe I can invade your brain space so you can kind of, Maybe, you know, maybe you hear this and then maybe six months from now you go, you know what, this is bullshit or whatever, whatever your particular thing is that's not serving you anymore, that's not feeding your soul, it's not giving you life, it's not adding to the uh, cosmic ledger and, the uh, you know, adding to the karmic flow of abundance that should be coming your way by you creating the unique infinite dance that you were sent here to create and to do and to perform and to to give to to the world um so yeah well this is a hell of an intro <laughs> but hey it's a new year show and what would mycadelic be without long-winded and verbose tangential ranting intros that's what we do here folks that's what we do. Um, so yeah, I guess the moral of that story is um, to try and be as brave as you can, you know, because it can be it can be a tough, cruel world out there, and people can be cruel, and they can really, you know, you can really feel alone in a group of people that seem like they're against you because they're pressuring you into being something that you're not, and you know. There's nothing to be afraid of, right? I mean, like, so you're going to be a little different. So people aren't going to really jive with what you're putting down. At least you're being true to yourself. And, you know, it might not pay off right away, but in the long run, it pays off. Oh, I forgot. Right, exactly. I was, I was talking about me being creative and drawing. Yeah, so I stopped doing a lot of things that I thought were, that were really interesting, that really invigorated my soul and that I was really good at. Because I wanted to be cool, so I did stuff that was cool, and I made fun of people that you know did did things that were creative and interesting or, and whatnot. But now I have returned. The prodigal son has returned. I I am back home into the realm of my childhood self, creating again, being unique again, being weird again. And feeling good about it, not conforming to what other people want me to be. I'm just going to be me and fully me. And that, you know, be um, nice to people, of course. That doesn't mean that you you can be an asshole. Uh, but uh, be your unique self. And you will attract other other people to you that, that really you know, dig that vibe. Not everybody's going to dig it. You know, people, 
get kind of turned off sometimes by people that deviate from the from the norm. It's like, uh, you know, do not compute. But anyway, listen, this is uh, this is a 2017 reflection episode, and um, yeah, I mean, you know, I just wanted to get that out there because you know this has been a long journey of unfolding what uh, what I should be doing with my life and. You know, ultimately, uh, I've gone through lots of different sorts of uh, ventures, and now my next venture is heading to Peru. And uh, you know, I'm going to be going down there, and I'm going to be drinking ayahuasca, and I'm going to be working with ayahuasca. I'm going to be working with that plant medicine, that that amazing plant teacher, and I'm going to be learning from the best in the biz, as far as I'm concerned, at the Temple of the Way of Light, and. Um, I really look forward to making this podcast my own unique thing. And uh and and thank you so much to all of you guys who are along this ride with me. Thank you so much for supporting me, believing in me, having faith in me. Thank you so much for your messages and your donations, your ratings, your reviews. Thank you so much to every time you share the show or you talk about the show. Anytime you send me a message, um, you know, this is your podcast. I mean, this is, you know, cheesy stuff, guys, but hey, I don't I don't care, right? I don't feel the need to always qualify everything that I say, but this time I I am going to qualify it because we are, you know, bordering on the, the realm of cheese. But uh, but I mean it though. I mean, and I don't. I just don't know any other way to say it. So I'm just going to say it outright. You know, this is as much your podcast as it is, as it is mine. Um, you guys inspire me, and I'm inspired by you, and um, that meant the same thing. <laughs> All right, I gotta be honest with you. It's uh late at night here on the east coast in New York and my little niece my little 6 month old pudgeball niece coughed a mucus phlegm in my face today I felt like I got instantly sick these these kids they're like little bags of germs sometimes but she's adorable I love her um but I am coming down with a cold I just finished recording this podcast with Ed Lou and now why don't we just why don't we just listen to it right how about that? All right. Well, you know what to do if you love this show. Like it, share it, subscribe, leave a rating and review on iTunes, would you? It's it's a big help to the show, and uh, it helps when people are trying to figure out what they should listen to. If they come and they see uh, Mikeadelic, if they're searching for psychedelic podcasts or spiritual consciousness expanding podcast libertarian type shows what should i listen to what's out there what's new what's different oh my god what's this podcast whoa look at this 77 five star reviews oh my god these people are incredible look at all the things they have to say unbelievable right so thank you everybody who does that and thank you to richard to mason to barton to John, to Rob, to Ariana, Austin, Bud, Ben, Howie, Madeline, Mike, William, Liam, Vincent, Mark, Drake, Rhiannon, Rob, Will, The Dope Show, Ted, Carrie. Thank you, guys. You are all patrons of mine, and I thank you all very much. Please be sure to check Patreon for updates and rewards and bonus stuff. And um, all you know, there's going to be a lot of of cool things coming uh, on uh, on there as well. So, without further ado, thank you so much once again. I hope you guys all had a wonderful New Year's. Um, I hope you got a chance to check out that super moon. That was pretty awesome. I uh, stood outside um, staring into the sky, substance free, <laughs> of course. Um, yeah, and uh, staring up in the sky, and it was a beautiful night, and um, I love staring up at the sky, 
staring into the stars, looking at uh, Orion's belt and uh, the surrounding stars in the area, Sirius and uh, Capella and Riggle and um, all the stars that fill up this northeast sky that I was gazing upon. And that bright super moon, I don't know, something about the moon. I really, really dig it, really get a lot of power and energy from those full moons and especially the super moons. All right, guys, thanks for listening to this intro. Thank you for every single thing that you've ever done in your entire lives. You're all wonderful, beautiful, amazing people. And uh, it's 2018, huh? How about it? All right. I hope you enjoy this episode. Peace. Psychedelics are illegal, not because a loving government is concerned that you may jump out of a third-story window. Psychedelics are illegal because they dissolve opinion structures and culturally laid down models of behavior and information processing. They open to us the possibility that everything we know is wrong. We don't need new laws that control our consciousness and rigidly place it in a prison. Cognitive liberty. The fact that as adults, if we're not hurting anybody else, we should have the right to explore the contours of our own consciousness without any mediation or legislation on the part of somebody else. Reject authority. Authority is a lie. Or is it perception? Information is power. But we have to seize, seize the, opportunity. the opportunity. The opportunity. take the time to do that so i guess we're here today to do exactly that to kind of review the year that was and look forward to the year that is coming right mike yeah no definitely i think you know i i used to be one of these guys that was like um you know fuck new year's who gives a shit it's just another year what's the big deal doesn't matter uh, you know bono nothing changes on new year's day sing me another fucking song but um, but no, you're totally right. I, I mean, it's it, it is a good time to kind of reflect. I mean, it it's I, I've I've uh, I think it's I think it's a good thing. You know, these things exist for a reason. Um, you know, the time cycles and whatnot. The the you know we have them the way that we do. So um, yeah, 2017 really you know sucked my uh, sucked goat ass for me. So <laughs> well, what um, happened? Um, no, I just it was just a bad year for me. I mean, it was weird. I mean, it was like it was a good year, I guess, in a lot of ways. But in a lot of ways, it was not such a good year. Um, it was one of the worst years of my life. Uh, but uh, you know, personal stuff. But but um, um, yeah, I mean, other than that, um, the podcast has grown. Like you said, the the Patreon thing has really you know, taken off and I'm like, really, I'm really happy about that. So, um, there's a, there are a lot of things to be kind of grateful for. Um, and a lot of things to look forward to, man, I'm, I'm just, I'm really happy. You know, like I said, I, I started off saying like, who cares? Like, it's just a bunch of nonsense that, you know, time is a flat circle and that doesn't mean anything, you know, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. But it, it, it you know, I, I believe that there is more meaning to it. I want to, I want to believe that there's more meaning to it. I'm going to give more meaning to it. And by giving more meaning to it, I'm going to create more meaning for it. So I'm, I'm hoping that 2018, I, I feel reinvigorated. I feel fresh. I feel optimistic, positive. I feel good. And I want to put that into 2018, start fresh. I want 2018 to be a big, good year. And you're moving to Peru. Well, I'm not not moving there, but I'm I'm going to be there for the next three months, starting January 21st. Yeah. So you're getting balls deep into ayahuasca land. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting <laughs> balls balls deep into into ayahuasca land. Well, yeah, you know what, man? Sure. That's going to be a big change for you, and um, I'm sure something good will come out of it because I've never heard a bad story coming out of somebody spending three months in Peru. For the most part, I think you'll have a brand new perspective on what life is about, your experience here, and it's going to aid you along your journey back to the States. I mean, I don't know if you're going to continue to live in New York or you're moving to 
Colorado or whatever your plans are, but along the way, you're gonna use that knowledge that you're gonna pick up in Peru to guide you to live this experience with better wisdom and better actions. And I, I feel like that's a great thing. And I can already feel that you'll learn a lot because, you know, for the most part, I feel like a lot of people don't need ayahuasca or don't need the mm -hmm. time in Peru. But, you know, for you, I feel like you would really benefit a lot from it because just like me, you're a really high strung kind of guy. I think you're even more high strung than I am. And I think that's a result of living in a city and being involved with the news and, you know, having deep psychedelic experiences and having those insights, but not really knowing how to integrate back completely into the society. I think that's safe to say because I feel that way for myself sometimes. Like, yeah, you know, you know? can I just say something real, yeah. real quick? Yeah. Just a, a technical matter. I, I don't know what happened. My, 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 my recording just kicked me out. You're recording, right? Yeah, I'm recording. So I'll, I'll right, send cool. you this. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but you know. Uh, yeah, for... no, you're you're right. You're you're totally right. And it's it's um, it's um, I, I don't I don't know if I would use the word high strung. I know what you're saying. I I and I know you're intense. saying with respect. Yeah. Yeah. Intense. Yes, I am. I am an intense person. Like, look at your Twitter uh, Twitter feed. It's very intense. <laughs> like, I didn't check my Twitter for days, man. And it has been one of the best decision of my life as well, next to Gmail. But when I checked my Twitter feed, I saw your post and I'm just like, Jesus, Mike, <laughs> calm down. Which one, yeah, which one? <laughs> all of them, man. All of them. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's not about, it's, to me, it's not necessarily about like, like, I don't, I don't see it as like being unhinged or like not calm. I don't I think just it's that it at as, all. Yeah, I don't think it's that at all. Well, I, I just see it as like, to me, the most interesting thing to, like I like to, I like to really dive deeply into things that I consider to be like really interesting. And I really, I do, I just, I like to really, I like to get really intense about stuff. I know it makes people uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Like I know, I know that it makes people uncomfortable and I'm sorry. It's just like the way I am. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I a lot of people, um, you know, kind of like to avoid certain things and I like to just go face, face first in them, even if it's kind of, um, sort of almost like a turnoff, you know, to, to, to some people, but to me it's, it's interesting and fun, you know? Yeah. I, I feel like that too. I mean, sometimes I get stuck in these, you know, potholes of arguments and, you know, you get into the whole tribal thing where you're arguing for a cause. I'm not saying you're doing that, but I do that certainly sometimes. And I lose track of who I am and what I'm arguing about eventually and you just kind of get sucked in into this ball of demon and you're clouded by anger and confusion and you're just trying to be right and over the christmas break i went to japan again and i went to a really zen place in kyoto and it's a really ancient city and uh there were some really really quiet places on christmas day I went to this Buddhist temple, which is kind of a rebellious thing to do because it is Jesus's birthday and I'm at some Buddhist place, but there was nobody there. And I think it was a Monday and Japanese people don't have Christmas for a national holiday. So I went to the Buddhist temple, which is on a base of a mountain surrounded by trees and woods. And it was one of the most serene and beautiful places I've ever been to and it really taught me a lot about just being still and being quiet and just enjoying the beauty of the world. Sometimes it's fun to get engaged into conflict and arguments and the whole loudness of the world and the marketplace of the world but also sometimes it's good to take yourself out of there and really reflect back on who you are as a person and where you are in this world and what this world is. And I think that's where a lot of great philosophy comes from is when we take a step back and we take a look at the world from a outsider's point of view and we put the pieces together and try to make it make sense. Does that make sense? Because 
I think when we're engaged in arguments and the talks of politics or the talks of, um, it sounded just, like you said talks of politics, like toxic politics. Well, I mean that's <laughs> that too. I mean currently, yeah, yeah, yeah. it is it, it works, is toxic, yeah. but yeah. you know when we're engaged in those things, we don't have room to think about the bigger picture because we're engaged in the detail, nitty gritty aspects of life and arguments. But when we take a look at philosophy, it is when we take a look at the whole grand big picture and we take these huge puzzle pieces and we try to piece it together. So when I was at that place, I was like, wow, like this is how it should be at least for half the year because the other half of the year or for the most for the most part, the majority of the year, I'm engaged in really angry and lively passionate discussions about either psychedelics or the way we should live or society or things like that not angry i wouldn't say angry but just passionate okay yeah yeah passionate but, yeah definitely i i, w I wouldn't really categorize you as being someone who's angry definitely right. passionate but not angry yeah but you know when i was at a place i got time to reflect back on you know my year as a whole because that was also my birthday and i turned 30 on that day and people are freaking out, like, oh, how do you feel now that you're 30? I'm like, I feel the same. I feel exactly the same as I did <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> it's just it's just a matter of how you feel on the inside. You know, age is just a number. It, you could be 80 years old, but you could have a heart of a 15-year-old, and it doesn't really matter. But it got me thinking, man. It got me thinking to reflect back on where I've been throughout this year, what I've learned. And at least for the podcast, man, it grew, it's grown a lot. I was looking at the podcast uh, catalog, I guess, of what shows I did this year and what guests I've had on and what I've learned. And it's been one hell of a ride, man. I mean, it sounds like a really cheesy thing to say, but this year I've made so much progress. And you too, you know, like I think we, we both made a lot of progress this year. And it's incredible, man. I mean, I had Duncan Trussell on. I think in the beginning of the year, I had a bunch of chaos magicians on lately. I had a bunch of people that talked about um, psychedelic medicine and how it's benefiting us and how we're going to go into the future with these medicine and what the implications are going to be. And I really feel like this year I found my voice in the podcasting space of where I stand and where I could take it because I think when I first started the podcast I didn't really know what I wanted to do I was just out there testing and seeing what I could get out of the podcast or what kind of interviews that I could give and this year or 2017 last year kind of really found my place in the world of podcasting and also psychedelics and where the limit is for me and how I could surpass that limit. You know, I had, I guess one of the highlights of last year was, you know, Duncan, JP Sears. I think you had JP Sears on as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, I had a bunch of other quote unquote, no names that were having brilliant discussions with me. And that's one of the things I realized Like, it's not about the name of the guests that really matters. You know, I had Duncan right, Trussell on. Right. And trust me, it was a great conversation, but it wasn't one of my favorite conversations by far. It because it, the, the name really doesn't matter. A lot of people tell me, "Hey, you should get this guy on because he's famous," or you "Should get that guy right. on." I'm like, I don't care. You know, I don't really care about the fame of the person as long as they have a great, you know, sense of the world. They have a great perspective, or they have a different perspective. Then I'm interested mm -hmm. to talk to them, but. So I think in 2018, going forward, I'm not really going to look at the name as much, but really what kind of work they put out there and how interesting they are and what kind of perspective they're going to offer into the world versus just a name quality. Because for the most part, I feel like we book big name people, they have really canned answers. And it's not their fault because they've been interviewed a thousand times right. and th those yeah. are the answers that they're going to give. And you've heard them already. So right. It's not really that interesting anymore to interview those people when you've heard them a thousand times. But exactly. when you interview people that have lesser fame, 
most of the time, man, they have really, really interesting perspectives. And I think it's incredible for us to get to talk to them and to showcase their knowledge to the rest of the world. Yeah, definitely. For sure. I mean, yes, totally. A hundred percent. I think that, um, that's, uh, that, that's definitely something to keep in mind, you know, good lesson learned, you know, right. It's like when you're first starting out, you you kind of don't know what you're doing. I mean, there's no, there's no like manual or guidebook, you know, like, okay, you want to be a podcaster? Here's what you do. You know, wh what is this? No one even really knows like what this is. Like one of the things that I learned in 2017, I mean, I guess, how old is my show? My show is only about a year, a little over a year old. So one of the things that I learned in 2017 was that people really respond well to these solo episodes that I do by myself, these kind of long diatribe ranting kind of episodes. And I, I initially felt sort of weird about them when I first put them out because I was like, you know, what is this? Like, I don't know what this is. This is strange. Like, you know, um, but, uh, but it's amazing how many people have responded to well to those, you know, it, it gave me positive feedback, uh, from those episodes. And it's really like instilled the confidence in me to, um, you know, talk about the things that I feel that I, that I'm interested in and, you know, that I don't necessarily have to rely on, getting guests or whatever. If I just, something strikes me, I can just turn on my microphone and just start going. And I know that I have like a safety net of like my core fans. Thank you everybody out there for listening and, and giving me the faith and the courage and, you know, instilling the will of Jesus in me <laughs> to, uh, to take it, take this podcast to the next level because the solo shows that I do, they're like, I always feel weird. I even feel weird talking about them now because they're kind of, they're kind of nuts. They're kind of crazy. Like if you listen to them, they're all over the place. They're tangential as fuck. They jump from, you know, they're, they're just, they're very, they could sound like the ramblings of a madman is what I'm <laughs> saying. You know, it's, it, it could say, it, you know, if you, if you, if you just showed it to somebody who wasn't familiar with me, didn't know me and they just started listening to it, I don't know what their reaction might be. It could be, you know, send this guy to a padded room immediately <laughs> because of that. That's, that's always what I'm thinking. You know what I mean? I'm always, I, I, I have, um, crippling self doubt, you know, always in, in the, in the creative process. But I think that I've discovered something here and, um, and I want to keep playing with that in 2018 and I want to make it even bigger and, and better. And I, and I, and I think I'm going to do that with my trip to Peru. Um, one of the things that I, I kind of envision myself doing is partaking in ayahuasca ceremonies and, um, immediately recording like after, like, you know, as soon as possible recording yeah. what, what's going on and, you know, um, what I'm thinking and what it all means and stuff like that and seeing if I can capture lightning in a bottle. Uh, so they say, you know, yeah, so that's going to be amazing, man. I think it's going to benefit you a lot. Like I said earlier, and it's going to make interesting podcasts, <laughs> you know, for the most part, it's going to make really, really interesting, uh, conversations with yourself. And that's one of the best things that you do <laughs> is yeah. you have great conversations with yourself. And I try to do the same thing sometimes, but it doesn't work for me because when I hear myself stutter or say, um, too much, I'll go back and re-record it. You know, the intros that I do, I've recorded those intros a hundred times, sometimes even 200 times before the official one gets put out because I mess up the words and I want to get it perfect. But I know sometimes it never will be. And on those solo casts, sometimes I'll mess up a word so bad that I'll have to re-record the entire thing. So I'm just like, you know what, man, it's too much. I'm putting too much time into this and people probably only going to listen to it once. And that word that you stuttered doesn't really matter probably in the long run. And I just have so much self-criticism that I can't let it go. You know what I mean? I can't record the whole thing and summon my thoughts correctly in right order. But you did a great job with that, man. And I feel like when you go to Peru... After an ayahuasca ceremony, 
your emotions are going to be so raw that it, it's it's going to spill out into the podcast, and people are really going to feel it. You know, one of the things that people tell me the most is their their favorite parts of the podcast is when we talk about personal stuff, like the host. So yeah. because people can relate, man, people can really relate because people grow with us. I feel like along the way, if they're a regular listener of the podcast, they get to know who we are, our personalities. And when we talk about our own experiences, people can really jive with that because they have also gone through the same thing. And and it, it it's going to be a really intense journey for you, I feel like, the four months of ayahuasca because... <laughs> It's it's a hell of a contrast from New York to Peru. Yeah. And uh, I can't imagine what you're thinking right now because I'll be nervous as hell. When are you going? So I'm going on January 21st, and I'll be there until April 21st. Um, and, yeah, I, I'm, I'm super excited. But, you know, another – talking about, you know, lessons of 2017 – you know, I did a lot of psychedelics in 2017 and, you know, I've had, a, I had a lot, I had a kind of, um, a transformation in 2017 with psychedelics. And one of those transformations was that, um, I, 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 you know, I re I really kind of like stepped into another realm of like psychedelic usage where I'm no longer, you know, kind of in the triple a leagues you know right well, not that i i guess not that me and you have been i mean we both run psychedelic podcasts but I, I i i the best way i could sum it up is that like i stepped up into the big leagues this year um and the way that i the way that i'm what i mean by that is i had several psychedelic trips where i was fully in 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 a symbiotic dance with the psychedelic drug that I was consumed by, like that was consuming me and I was consuming it. It was, it was, uh, it was really unreal. It, it was really powerful. And, um, unlike anything I've ever had before, it was like almost, um, I don't want to say immune to it. Like I wasn't immune to the trip. I still had the trip, but it was a full, like a full body immersion and a full union with the, the psychedelic, uh, that I was like, you know, meeting it like, um, like venom in Spider-Man, you know, the symbiote suit. It was That's like trippy. that kind of, yeah, it was very, very, I mean, it was very profound. You know, it was like, um, I started to feel very like powerful. I want to say like on, on these, on these trips, you know, and, and it was, it's, it's different because in the past psychedelic trips that I've had, you know, you, you kind of succumb to the trip, right? right? Like there's a level, there's a level of like letting go and just kind of going with the flow. But in this past year, I, I really worked like it was like a 50, 50 meeting. Like I met the psychedelic halfway and like, we like worked together on like a, like having like an amazing trip, you know, does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense. Of course, yeah. I've never experienced that. I think because it, it, it it's really rare that you hear that because when you take a heavy psychedelic, usually you're on a ride, you know, you're on a roller coaster and you're at the hands of their mercy. But it right. sounds like for you, you're kind of in a co partnership with a psychedelic and you're creating together and you're exploring together. Yeah. But, but that's not to say that this is a permanent lasting uh, atmosphere that I've flown into. This yeah. could just be a fleeting kind of went random thing. You know what I mean? I could go take five <laughs> grams of mushrooms tomorrow and freak, fr Let's you do know, it. <laughs> flip my tits off. Like I, I don't, you know what I mean? Like rip my skin off. Damn, it's me. not like a black belt, I, man. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, it, you know, it, 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 it seemed like that it's, it, it, it well, it was like that for uh, several trips that I had this past year. Um, and, uh, and I really learned a lot from those, uh, from those trips and, you know, for the people listening out there, it takes a long time and it, to get to, I think, to get to a level where you feel 
ultimately what I'm saying is I felt very comfortable, yeah. you know, with, with the psychedelic, uh, you know, I remember taking psychedelics years ago and, uh, really being at their mercy, you know, really being just along for the ride and God knows what's going to happen. And you ride this roller coaster through being frightened and being, you know, tortured and then being elated. Yeah. Um, but these sorts of trips were very different and, uh, and, and it was a, it's a whole new world. And, and, you know, like maybe that's just the prelude to where I'm going to now, you know, where I'm, where I am going to be flying into Peru and entering into the, the jungle and living with, uh, indigenous Shipibo shamans and drinking, uh, ayahuasca brew every night. I'm laughing because months. you say that you're a black belt <laughs> now and you're going to get your ass kicked when you get to Peru. I know. <laughs> I know you're gonna you're gonna have to come to me. It's be like apocalypse now. I'm gonna be like Colonel Kurtz in the uh, in the jungle. They're gonna be you know building statues in my in my name and stuff. And we're gonna I'm play gonna this look. clip back to you when you're getting your ass kicked. You're like, oh yeah, I'm kind of a black belt now. I'm in this co partnership with a psychedelic. I have no, no hubris, no ego here. I know, like I said, it's probably just a temporal fleeting thing. Yeah, you know. Psychedelics is di they're different every time. Every trip is different every time. Every psychedelic is different every time. And so, you know, who knows what's going to happen? It's always, you know, psychedelic use. It's an ongoing conversation with with a substance that's beyond our understanding. And the only way that we can understand it is to consume it. But you know what, man? This year, I found out that a lot of people want to seek for the peak experience when it comes to psychedelics. They want that grand overall wisdom drop in moment of time where they can freeze it and really get a lot from that psychedelic that peak experience and it's really hard to describe and i'm trying to trying my best to describe the peak experience but it's, it's really hard because it's something that is not tangible but a lot of people go into psychedelics ayahuasca mushrooms lsd they look for those peak experiences and what I found out this year or last year is that the peak experience is not in a psychedelic. It's in our everyday life. We just have to recognize it. And what I mean by that is I was always the person that was looking for the peak experience. I mean, for the most part, yes, I want to learn new things. Yes, I want to see bright lights, but I want to feel that peak. I want to feel that power. Mm. And... This year, I smoked DMT, I did mushrooms, I did the light therapy, I did a lot of psychedelics, and throughout it all, with the DMT, I felt comfortable, just like you. I felt really mm. comfortable. It was amazing, don't get me wrong. It was mind-blowing, it was beautiful in every way possible, but I could, anytime I wanted to, come back to myself and be like, wow, this is amazing, wow. This is what's happening right now. There is a movie playing in front of my eyes right now. Mm. You know, you can have those moments where you can zoom out at that time and have the Atman, so to speak, and be like, hey, this something is happening right now. Something is happening. And I don't like to have that, you know, because you're not truly in the moment. You're still analyzing. Hey, something is happening. Wow. I'm supposed to say wow right now. You know mm. what I mean? Like there's something in the back of your head that's like analyzing the whole thing. And it's really apparent now in my psychedelic trips versus right. before it was truly a moment of awe. And you're taking by that situation and you're no longer in that space and time. You're just there and you're just in those spaces. But now I'm able to zoom out, zoom myself out from those spaces and be like, wow, this is amazing. Cool. I saw that last time too. Oh, wow. Here it goes again. You know, it's almost like you wrote that roller coaster so many times that you know where the right. turns are. And you're like, okay, yeah, next yeah. turn is coming. I'm supposed to feel like, you know, feel really a lot of G force here. And it happened in DMT, it happened on the light therapy. I mean, especially the light therapy. I went to Chiang Mai. And I met with this guy. I had him on a podcast, Guy Harriman, really nice mm -hmm. guy. He had a whole healing center and everything. He said, like, do you want to try the light therapy? And I'm like, sure, of course. That's why I'm here. And, you know, I <laughs> laid down in bed. I did a whole podcast about it. But basically, 
I was kind of bored, you know, to be honest. I was looking at the visuals, and the visuals were so peyote-like. Not that、mm-hmm. I know, I never did peyote, but that's what they tell me. And I had headphones on. They're playing this weird music, and there's like frogs in the background and stuff. And the colors were really vivid, but it was really two dimensional. And I was like, okay, when is this gonna be over? <laughs> I mean, I was literally thinking about when is this gonna be over because I want to go to Chiang Mai to do some other fun stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like,、right. like I'm kind of over this. So it got me realizing that hey, maybe the peak experiences that we're always looking for isn't in the obvious places. It's in the not so obvious places. It's in the forest where I was at on Christmas Day, and those silent moments where、mm-hmm. nothing moved, and you're just in that space in that moment, and you could feel the serenity of the world and of that place and of that time, and you don't have the capacity to zoom out and be like, "Wow, this is happening." And those are the trees. Those are the people. And this is Christmas Day. I wasn't thinking about any of it. I was just purely in the moment, and taking by my own breath at that moment. And I didn't have any captions running in the background saying, "I'm supposed to smile right now. I'm supposed to be really happy when this is over." When it was over, I was like, "Wow, where did all that time go?" It's almost like that time flew by so quickly, and. I really feel like those are the new peak experiences, of, peak experiences of my life. Maybe in different times of different stages of people's lives is different. You know, when I was maybe in my twenties or early twenties, the peak experiences was when I was on a lot of drugs and I was going to raves and I was taking psychedelics and MDMA, the whole nine yards, and、yeah. I was you know going crazy <laughs> and ham at those parties. Yeah. And in my later twenties, it was more. So of those psychedelic moments where I was seeing at the elves and meeting them on DMT and whatnot, but now I feel like my peak experiences has been in the everyday, in the in the now, and it feels like so cheesy to say that because that's what the books say. Oh, you have to live in the now, have to be in the moment. But <laughs> well, if they're all saying it, it is kind of true I mean, though. You know be, what I mean? You know, yeah, it's it's. It's. It, I know we we want to have some kind of like grand, you know, fireworks display of like an explosive something that no one's ever said before. But you know what? You're right. You know, and and it's like,、um, I as as many good, profound, eye opening psychedelic experiences I had this year, I, you know, it wasn't like my most psychedelic year. Like you said, like you know, years ago. I was like taking, you know, going to festivals and raves, and you know, it was just it was a different. It's been a wonderful journey. Yeah, you know, it's been a wonderful journey. And this year was a balance. It was like once every once every three months, I did like a heroic dose. Then I I dabbled in a little bit of microdosing, and then、um, but but I actually had a lot of experiences this year. A lot of experiences this year, and the first year ever, really, that I really tapped into meditation, that I really tapped into breath work, and that I and that I actually recently, just recently, did this thing called a no fap challenge. <laughs>、uh, this 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 guy on、um, this guy on Instagram, Float Universe. I, yeah, I, I, he、uh, yeah, he's been promoting this, and we started talking and. I I wanted to like cut back on my internet usage and porn watching and all that kind of stuff, and so just the right time it took place and I found I found a lot of power, a lot of you know it was almost psychedelic in itself going thirty days without masturbating. I mean it was <laughs> it, it was I mean it was I'm sorry for laughing. Yeah, I mean it's, it's no, it's funny. I mean because if if it, I mean if I were to tell that to myself like five years ago or whatever, I would have laughed too. But it's like. Seriously, I mean, I I love, I really do like challenging myself and challenging myself and all these. Like, it's weird, actually. I t- so I did thirty days. This is like, this is very kind of sort of unpsychedelic, I guess. I stopped doing everything and I stopped smoking weed. I stopped,、uh, you know, I stopped, I stopped jerking the pony, whatever you want to call it, and、uh, <laughs> I just stopped everything. Yeah, I stopped everything and I just went really deep into meditation and breath work. And I felt incredible. I mean, I I felt like a like a feeling that I've never felt before. It was, it was like 
getting to a psychedelic peak experience it by doing the opposite of what you would think yeah. you should do, you know? And so this year was a combination. 2017 was a combination of, of, like I said, profound, you know, symbiotic psychedelic experiences and also very like, um, restrained discipline and, uh, and, and kind of, what is it? What's the word? Hermeticism. Is that the, is that the right word? I think or like so. Buddha, Buddha monk like ism. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just going to be monk. Little... Yeah. 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 I mean, <laughs> you're going to shave your head. No, <laughs> never. but it's, it, 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 it's, I really, I really like the challenge and, you know, I, I, I read into, um, I read into a lot of the stuff about, you know, kind of, uh, Pres preserving your seed and the chakras and the energy and the power that you can, you know, get from that. And I don't know how much I really necessarily buy into all that stuff because there's so, there's so many things. 2017 was also a year, and I'm sure you'd agree with me on this, Ed. 2017 was a year that it, just when I thought that I had walked down the hall and opened up all the, all the doors to the rabbit holes, I figured out now oh, there's so many more. Yeah. There's so much more holes that, I mean, the chaos magic and everything with Miguel Connor and the Gnostic stuff. Right, I mean, that's, right. I'm still, it's that I, I, I still don't really know what's going on with all that stuff, but it fascinates me and it blows my mind. And I, I keep trying to dig into that, you know, the magic and, and Gnosticism and, um, he, you know, healing crystals and, uh, you know, uh, tarot cards, uh, the <laughs> I, Ch I Ching. There's all these things that I, they, I keep opening these doors. There's, there's never an end. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. So, um, yeah, I, I, I guess 2017 was also a year that proved to me that my journey and the journey of this podcast and, and life is, is a never ending it's autodidactic. I, I'm never going to stop learning and challenging myself. And that's pretty cool because I, I, I find it to be fun. And, and, uh, it's, uh, I, I feel like that's really where you find the, the juice of life, you know, is to, is to dive into things that, um, you know, like you said, like just even being in a forest and just absorbing that moment. Oh, well, well, what's so special about that? I mean, that sounds so simple and cheesy. Well, you know, if you tap into that, and you and you tap into that frequency and you and you tune yourself to ride that harmonic wave in that moment i mean that's that's the whole that's eternity right there you know that's powerful yeah i feel like sometimes life is so paradoxical because the moment you're looking for something so hard it will always elude you and you would never never find it but the moment that you let go of those ideas and concepts it will come to you and it's been happening to me all year and it's a really tricky thing to play with because well let's say i want more money and i have to work hard for it no doubt but if you have the mindset of oh man i need more money i don't have enough money then you would never get it but the moment that you're okay with not having money or okay with not having the chase of money and the desire for money then Somehow, some way, I guess you're more relaxed. The way that you do things are more smooth, and you get it. You you get it, man. And it's like this tricky dance that you to play with. And I'm still learning how to, you know, to have control of that. But again, that is also a form of control. Like I'm trying to control that in itself, and it's like the wrong approach to do it. But it's incredibly hard, and it's this Buddhist non-desirable or not non-desirable but non-desire ism you know what i mean like this this right yeah like non-attachment yeah this thing where like if you're attached to this idea then this idea would always elude you but if you're not attached to the idea then those things would come to you naturally and it's yeah, like that's well very tricky to understand. how the fuck would you <laughs> yeah you know what i mean like how yeah. the fuck would you make that work so right. the more you understand it, I guess, the more that you could play with those parameters. But for me, like I'm still learning this stuff. And I've heard somebody say something this year or last year. Fuck, I keep fucking that up. But 2017 is that I asked somebody, how do you use magic for money? You know, because I, I, I need money, man. I'll be straight yeah. with you. I need, I need some money. 
And uh, sure. that's, I, everyone could use more yeah. money. Yeah. And that's the thing that I want more in 2018 because I'll be honest, I'm not making enough money in 2017. So I want to make enough money for 2018 to be happy. And one of the people that I talked to, that was a Qigong um, chaos magician. He was on a show. I think his name was Zach Louie. Mm-hmm. And the episode has been aired already. But he said a lot of people have a baggage around money, meaning that they think that money is evil, but they don't even know it. Because when we hear about, let's say, Donald Trump or some rich billionaire making a lot of money, our automatic reactions like, oh, that's gross. Fuck that guy. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's wrong. But that, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, the guy's making money. I mean, there's literally nothing wrong with that. Yes, there might be problems with the way that they're making money, right? I'm not saying Trump or Bill Gates. I'm just saying, like, in general. But money in general isn't a bad thing. And it, just because they're making money or corporations are making money doesn't mean it's bad. But we have this automatic assumption that, oh, that's fucked up. That's wrong. This corporation made over 200% of their revenue from last year. That's wrong. But it's not wrong because that's what corporations do. If they're doing it the right and correct way, there's nothing wrong with that. Of course, if they're destroying the environment or if they're, you know, enslaving people, then that's yeah. bad. But you know what I mean? Like there's this overarching baggage I, I kinda, around I sort money. Of know, yeah. yeah. I, I, you know I, what I mean? I, I, trying to say? I sort of know where you're coming from, but there's a lot to unpack there. Like it's, it's so, it's so, it's such a heavy area because you're right in a, in a sense, like money is just a transfer of energy. Yeah. I mean, that's really what it is. Right. right. I mean, it's like in, in its purest form, money is like, I love the way money works for me now. Like recently, like all of a sudden I just been getting pinged. Oh shit. Someone's donated to my, <laughs> someone gave me PayPal. I just got twenty dollars on PayPal. What the fuck? That's yeah. awesome. Cool. People are just ge- people are just sending me money. Like that's great, <laughs> you know. So I'm just like, I want that to happen more. But people are sending me money because I'm doing something, and they they like what I'm doing, and they want to be a part of contributing to it. So that in that form of exchange is the most purest form, right? It's like the voluntary exchange of goods and services. That's pure, but. Our, our uh, the 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 modern monetary system uh, that has been um, centralized, un, you know, under the centralized authoritarian uh, model of what we would call banksters, you know, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it is sort of it sort of spoils. Um, it's sort of it sort of spoils the pot a little bit. Well, that's exactly my point taints, because those people yeah. ruined the but pure aspects the of money you know what i mean the entire yeah but they're yeah. the people that create the entire monopoly board that but we play on what i'm trying yeah. to say is that when we look at a rich guy down the street like driving a rolls royce for example like we automatically think or assume he's a douchebag because he has money right i mean a lot of people do for the most part like when some guy rolls up in a lambo yeah, yeah. you know what yeah. i mean like we, we oh, automatically I, oh, assume like oh lambo. fuck that guy and we have this envious relationship with people with money but it's like no you should congratulate that person you should be happy for that person that he made it so he can ha- drive a lamb of course like i'm not thinking about that 99 percent of the time <laughs> you know 99 percent of the time i see a chinese guy on a lambo in hong kong i'm like fuck that dude but that's the thing that i should correct because like i'm having this toxic mindset about people having money of course that could also be you man like you could also be that person of course, I don't know how that person made that money. I'm assuming they made the money with healthy intentions and and actions. Well, yeah, right. I, see, I don't, but I don't think that's the case, you know, because I think, I yeah, think well, we don't system, know that though, right? Like we don't no, know, like I, the guy in Lambo, I, for example. That's that's true. That's yeah. true. But I, you know, in New York, I see people like that all the time. I see, you know, really super, and, and I, I I always get angry when I see a really super hot girl <laughs> with a guy, with a guy who is just kind of a schlub, you know, not, not to say that I'm, you know, anything special, but you can obviously, everybody's always seen that situation, you know, some like, you know, 60 year old overweight Greek, like shipping air that has like, you know, bushels of hair pouring out of his chest and intertwined with gold jewelry and then he's got some 20 year old model hanging off his arm you know and he gets out of a like a ferrari um 
you know, maybe that guy's living a great life or maybe he's empty inside. You know what I mean? Maybe, maybe, maybe what he had to do to get to that point, maybe everything that he did in his life was just to get these things so he can have this life. And I think oftentimes that is the case because, you know, think about the, what you have to do in order to get to that position, you know, and people are just chasing these material dreams. So I don't necessarily know if it's healthy or not. Um, um, uh, you know, I, well, let me, I don't let me know. give you a better example. For example, yeah. Duncan Trussell for a while, he was driving a Mercedes Benz. He had an 18 year old girlfriend and I have zero problems with that. And hey, really? his girlfriend was 18. Last yeah. girl he was in? I think oh, wow. they broke up now for, I don't know. Somebody told me they broke up now. I don't listen to his it's podcast not- anymore. <laughs> okay. But somebody yeah. told me they broke up. But anyways, okay. yeah, yeah, there yeah. was like a two year period of time where he was driving a Mercedes in LA living in a rich neighborhood and banging an 18 year old model. Right. right and great. a lot of people, yeah. a lot of people on his Reddit on subreddit or forum were hating on him. Like, fuck this guy. He pretends like he's a hipster Buddhist, but, but now he's driving a Mercedes and living in a rich neighborhood and has an 18 year old model girlfriend. Like what kind of life is he living? Like, this is not a life of a, buddhist practitioner and i'm like well that's total bullshit because like he made that money himself and there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with him having money or having an 18 year old girlfriend if he's an asshole then yeah like you can talk about that with him but he's a nice guy you know he's a great guy he's funny as hell he has a great podcast and he has an 18 year old girlfriend he's made money so there's nothing wrong with that and as long as people have that mindset about oh fuck him because he's dating an 18 year old and he's making money then those people will never be able to achieve that themselves because it's a mental blockage that they have in a, in themselves and whenever the opportunity arises for them to succeed on that level they would fuck up subconsciously i feel like so that they don't make it on that level and that's what i feel yeah. like i did this year or i realized on 2017 is that I have some mental baggage about certain things. Money is one of them. And I'm not allowing myself to succeed or to go all the way so I could reap the most benefits. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, I'm not talking about the billionaires out there that are making money from oil and all that stuff. Like, that's a different thing. I'm just talking about like my own or people's own mental blockages that they have to get over. And I feel like sometimes on psychedelics or ayahuasca, people are able to see that and get over it. Not all the time, right. because I think it's a really tricky thing. It's a, it's a thing that's hidden deep in your subconscious, and you don't even know it until somebody brings it up. And when somebody brings it up, you have to recognize that in yourself and also make the changes towards unblocking those blockages. And it's incredibly difficult, because now I, when I'm looking at you know, some colleagues of mine that are doing better instead of hating on them or being jealous i'm inspired by that you know i want to be inspired by that i want to be like hey they're just like me before and now they're making it big i want to be just like that i want to follow their footsteps like i want to be friends with that situation not be enemies with it you know and i feel like the more i befriend that situation and those successes the more I'm able to succeed myself. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. And, and as long as you're like, for me, uh, my blockage with money and maybe one of the things that I want to work on this year is I detest doing anything that goes against my core beliefs. And I, I, I worked a lot of jobs. I worked like in, in New York, um, you know, before I quit them all, we're all, soul sucking jobs that just, I was making a lot of money, but I was doing things that weren't aligned with what I believe in, you know, it's just, it, it, you know, kind of shady kind of tactics and manipulative sorts. (laughs) Yeah. Just, you know, just, just, you know, advertorial, you know, I used to do copywriting for advertorials and it's, you know, I was very good at it. But, you know, peep, it's, it's, you know, it's sort of deceptive. I, you know, I'm selling these products that I don't really believe in. You know, I'm making up these stories. 
So it, it's like, you know, w- w- what am I doing? You know, I, I, am I just living to make a paycheck so I can pay to live in New York so I can, you know, party and, and do stuff or whatever, you know, it, to, so I can go out to eat and stuff. It's like, you know, so that kind of stuff rubs me the wrong way. So I want – one of the things I want to work on is trying to enter into a realm where I'm able to uh, attract a, a, an abundant lifestyle uh, or income for myself, doing the things that I really believe in, creating the things that I really want to create. And, you know, there's no doubt about it that it takes a lot of work to do that, right? I mean, it's not going to just come, come your way. It really takes you putting in the work to do that. So I, th- but I think that maybe that's the long road, right? So, you know, you, you brought, you brought up an example of Duncan Trussell and he was driving this Mercedes, you know, Duncan's like 43 years old, man, you know? So <laughs> it, it, it took him a long time to get yeah. that Mercedes. You know what I mean? He's not some hotshot, you know, you know, 25 year old who just made a bunch of money on like Bitcoin and like, <laughs> you know, decided to buy a Mercedes, you know, it, it, it's, it's, you know, he took the long road. He invested in working on himself, building up his following, building up his podcast, building up his comedy touring, going through lots of stuff, you know, so, so making money in, on your own terms in, in a way that's aligned with your value system, hundred percent, I agree with. And, you know, that's one of the things that I'm trying to figure out what to do and, and how to do that. Cause I, you know, when we were talking about before, like the podcast and, and stuff, it's like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that I do that it's, that I'm very, that I feel like I don't deserve. Like I don't deserve to, there's that, there's a blockage of like, I don't deserve this or something. So I have to get over that sort of thing, but it's a very tricky, it's a very tricky area, right? Because you want to make sure that you attract things that you, that that will enhance your life and enrich your life. At the same time, you want to make sure that you're attracting the right things and you're doing it in a, in a way that's aligned with your belief system in a natural, positive, healthy way. And you're not harming, causing harm to anybody else. And, um, and you and you want to also make sure that you don't get braggadocious and develop an ego where you're saying like, "Well, I deserve all this stuff." You know, so it's a very fine kind of balance that uh, that I'm that I'm still working on and trying to learn. You know. Yeah, I think everybody is working on that because I think a lot of people are working jobs that they don't like and they hate themselves every single day when they go to work. But then when they find their passion, they're not able to convert that into money and to feed themselves. And it's so rare that you have people that are able to do both. You know, it is really rare. And those are the dream jobs. And it's really difficult because to feed yourself, you need X amount of money. And maybe your passion doesn't feed every single one of your 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 habits you know maybe maybe it's going to feed one third of your lifestyle but you have to engage yourself in work that you don't like that are against well, your this values is the, this is the real crime of the world yeah in my opinion you know this is this is the real tragedy of the world and uh you know i'm, I'm gonna get intense real quick because i'm really passionate about this you know this is the real tragedy of of the world that we live in is the fact that uh the the, the systems that we have set in place dictate to us the behavior that we that, that we must follow if we want to be successful. So, you know, in, in other words, all of the powerful systems in our lives, whether it be government, corporations, the economic system, uh, the banks, the 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 cartels, the the colleges, you know, the media, they all set game rules. If you play according to those game rules, then you will be rewarded. You know, if you're if you're good little boys and girls, you'll get a gold star. The problem with that is that we're all abiding by these these sorts of rules that don't necessarily fit into us as beautiful, free, independent, you know, cosmic beings in this in this in this in this finite human sack that we're living in, where we want to just burst out and and explore our creative juices and give the world the passions that that, that it so deserves that it's waiting. For, and that's the real crime. You know, if we could, if we could encourage children to follow their bliss and follow their passions and follow their creativity and see where that guides them from an early age, rather than imposing it on them, shatter the mold, change the paradigm, change the system. We will literally change the world because we'll birth new, um, new 
new thing, new value systems will come about into being. We'll have more dancers, more artists, more pottery makers. Fuck, I, I, I don't know how I got on this page. I was the other day, I was just watching this guy make pottery on a Facebook live and there was like a bunch of people in there and he was like jamming out to like fish or some jam band. I, the guy was like having the time of his life. He had, he was with barefoot, just like on this kick thing. I, I learned all about pottery. It was like, it's like a kick pedestal thing. And yeah, it's he's hard, just, man. Have you done he's it before? Just making pot. No, never. But I was, I was fascinated by that. I was like, this is like, you know, this is what people want to do. People you know, funny story. Funny you know? story, I had a ceramics class in high school and the criteria was you have to make at least four pots to get a passing grade. And if you don't make a pot, you have to write a paper to kind of, um, I guess, replace the pot. So some people make four or four pots and some people make two and write two papers. I couldn't make one, so I wrote four papers. <laughs> I mean, it was really difficult. It was the hardest thing I've ever done. <laughs> All right, so you're a paper writer. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. You know, there's nothing wrong. I'm with sorry. That. I'm sorry yeah. for interrupting. No, no, not no. I was done. But I just, you know, I just, I, I just to reiterate. I mean, I just that's. I really feel passionately about that because you know, if you look at it, children. You know, back to cliched things that are true. I mean, it's cliche for a reason. Children of the future. I mean, it's obvious. You know, if we're if we're if we're in the game right now, uh, and then the training module is the is the education system. Well, we need to do better with the training modules so we can get people to do things. You know, who says that we need to have all the jobs that we currently have in this world? That you know, we don't. You know, we can have people who are you know there there can be more artists, more creative people. Uh, the the emphasis just is, just has to be put on that for children to follow those paths, and um. You know, and, and I think it's a it it would be a much more beautiful and much more interesting world where because you know I I've been there, man. I I've I've been in those soul sucking jobs where you're you just you wake up and you just want to kill yourself. You know, it's like fuck, like I don't I don't want to get on the subway. I don't want to put this shirt on. I don't want to see fucking Jill from accounting. Like I you know I just I I don't want to go to fucking happy hour. You know, after work, like I just want to fucking you know, sleep all day in bed and I don't want to participate in this thing. Um, so there's a yeah. few things there I want to unpack because please, while please I do, do agree with you, I've talked, I've talked about this before with another guest questioning whether capitalism is maybe detrimental to artistic creativity. And sometimes I feel that way, but other times I don't. And Right now, for sure, our society is not geared towards art. It's geared towards, you know, feeding people and managing people and governing people. And it's not really artistic creativity driven. But also, when I look back at ancient times, back in the uh, Renaissance or even before that, there was a lot of great art that produced from those times. And when you look at those governments, I mean, those were worse governments than what we have currently. And what sparked those great art and creativity is resistance and hardship and bad times. And yeah, I really feel like if we want to make art, we can't tell, I mean, listen to what people tell us, listen to authority or, you know, follow the gestalt of the world. We have to, you know, grab life by the balls and really dictate our own future and make art on ourselves. You know, like that's what yeah. we're doing right now. I mean, this podcast, a lot of people don't think it's art, but, you know, the way we craft the conversation and the way that we publish these things, I feel like it's kind of a work at art. And, you know, I feel like we are both creative people. And if the system itself is not letting us, then we have to do it ourselves. And I feel like the more that the government oppresses us or the system is against us, the better art will be able to create because ultimately art speaks to the oppressed and art is the language of the oppressed for a, the longest time. You know, I'm not saying every piece of art is like that, but ultimately for the past, I don't know, few centuries, the greatest art has come out of oppressed people and right. Yeah. The, yeah. You know what I mean? So like there's like two, two sides of the coin 
And I definitely don't think that we're in a place or in a culture of art these days because everybody is too driven by capitalism and money and things like that. Not that that's a bad thing, you know. Of course, we need that, but I feel like there should be right, more art yeah. involved too. And I, I'm not I'm not sure if the government funding arts or whatever. Like it's funny because we talked about me and my previous guest. We talked about. Um, the government defunding the arts, and he's like, "Yeah, defund every art. That's better for art. The more funding you have in art, the worse it's going to be because we don't need government right. funding and regulation in art. Like, defund all the arts. Like, the poor people or artists are, the greater the arts will be. <laughs> you know, so yeah, you yeah. know, it, it's it's a double sided coin, and it's an interesting perspective. But I definitely agree with you. Sometimes I feel like we should educate people to think outside the box more and not play into this modern slavery system that we're in today. But also. This system could also produce a lot of great art, you know, like a lot of great sure. innovation. Sure, no, yeah, you know, you're totally, right. yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I mean that you're, you're totally right about that because it, it's, it's, it's really the only thing that we really can do because we're never going to live in a utopia, right? Of course, it's just not like so. The only thing that we can do is make sure that we're constantly always fighting to lean towards the light. Right. That's right. It's just, it's just, you just lean. We, you know, there's always going to be chaos. Back to Star Wars. Disorder. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yes. Back to Star Wars. You know, it's, it's like, you, you know, there's always going to be an empire. There's always going to be a first order. There's always going to be a Sith. But there's always going to be a counterbalance to that. Right. You know, as darkness rises, so does light to meet it. Uh, you know, so, um, that, that is, that is really that the way that the world works. And it's like, you know, what I'm concerned about though, is just making sure that we don't lose that spark Yeah, back to Star Wars, because if you <laughs> lose the spark, if you lose the spark, then it's over, yeah. right? Then you, then you've entered into the machine world where, um, you know, th- that it's just this, the cold humorless uh, vacuum of space of the, of the cold machine, you know, dark empire. And that's, that's not where we want to be. We want to be somewhere that, where there's a balance. Ultimately, we want to be in a place where, um, we're not ruled by machines and we're not, you know, living in this dystopian kind of matrix world, but that we're living in, uh, in harmony with things and they're, and they're serving us and, and we're serving them in, in an equal kind of balance. And it's always going to be a dance, you know, and it's, and there's always, I think there's always going to be times where we lean further towards the dark and then we're going to have to, you know, start to come back towards the light. Um, so yeah. And, and art, art is definitely something that, um, is like modern day sort of, shamanism or, or something like that you know poets artists musicians they tap into a realm that's uh, uh magical it's like it's a li- lightning in a bottle yeah when you're listening to a song you know for example you know listen some of the li- sometimes the lyrics of a song it's not it's not written word it's 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 more poetry it's it's something that's you can't really put a finger on, but it communicates a feeling or a moment or, or something like that. And, um, you know, those are really the, the artists, the poets, people like that. They're really the ones that, you know, there's this quote, I think, um, I forget exactly who said it, it might've been Joseph Campbell. He said the, the, the madman and the mystic swim in the same waters, although the mystic and the mystic can be the artist, you know, the artist is the mystic, the madman and the artist swim in the same waters, except the madman drowns and the artist comes back to the society with something uh, of of value to enrich the culture, you know? Right. Yeah. That's a great point, man. It's, it's, we're living in an interesting time and who knows what 2018 is going to bring because 2017 has been one hell of a ride, but I feel like overall, you know, 17 has been a good year for me personally, um, for the podcast as well. I th- I feel like I've grown a lot from the previous year, just in terms of perspective and things that I know are important and things that I should avoid, and more so things I should avoid because in seventeen there was so much political talk that was going around, 
and I kind of dove myself headfirst into that world. And, you know, the first beginning of the year, all the way to June, I was kind of obsessed with the arguments of both sides. And I would engage myself in some of those arguments. And I would even trigger people on purpose by saying certain things just to get a reaction out of them. And I've kind of stared at the demon so much that I've become the demon a little bit. And I forget to see polarities or I forget to see that there is duality on, on in the world. You know, I, I, I focus too much on this is the right thing to do. And this is how people should think. And this is the only way, but I for a lost perspective for a bit, you know, on how there is duality. And when I kind of realized that I took myself out of those discussions and I cleaned up my thinking to where I'm able to see both sides of the argument and I'm not wearing the costume that people wear these days. You know, I feel like 2017 people has, has gotten a lot more tribal than ever before, you know, fighting for their own side. And I don't blame them because we're tribal people and these are passionate topics to discuss and there is real implications involved. But it's also important for us to not wear the costumes and not look at ourselves in that light and to really just realize that ultimately we're human beings and we're supposed to love one another, you know? We're not these team members or tribe warriors that are fighting over this thing that is ultimately made up. I mean, all this government stuff, all this cultural stuff, it's all just made up human stuff, man. At the end of the day, it doesn't really fucking matter when you go out to nature and take a few shroomies, you know? Like, that stuff goes out the You're train. Right. It doesn't fucking matter. So why are yeah. we so serious about it? If we're just being more lighthearted about it, maybe we're more um, forgiving and loving and a lot of conflicts that we might have could be solved in a day or two. Of course, there are really important and serious topics to discuss, but we don't have to go about it in such tribal manners. You know, like we could go about it in a different, better, loving way. All of a sudden, I sound like a love and light warrior here. <laughs> well, no, uh, no I you know mean, what I mean, like you're right? Yeah, I mean, if you if you can, if anybody that's listening to this can, you know, it res if that resonates with anybody, and you decide to practice that, just see what happens. See what happens when you don't get dragged into other people's shit. You know, someone cuts you off in traffic. You know, well that that's their that's their problem. You know, they're 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 you know. They're rushing against the sp space time continuum. They're they're yelling, scratching, and clawing and gnawing at the at the world, trying to get theirs. You you already have yours. You know, if you're comfortable and if you're comfortable in the now and you're comfortable in the present and you you trust the the flow of of your life and the flow of the universe, it's like, you know, you you will you will live in in sort of a different. You will vibrate on sort of a different frequency, and but as soon as you get roped in to somebody else's, you know, junk, then, you know, then, then you're, you're at the mercy of, uh, of the, of the waves of their karma. You know, it's like, then you're just, you'll, you'll, you get roped into that, you know, Uber meta human game yeah. where you're just like, you're, you're narrow minded and it's just, you know, it's my team against your team and you're, you're throwing your own feces at each other. You're back to being a monkey throwing yeah, shit. That's you know? exactly what's happening, you know, and on yeah. social media or in, on family tables, on Christmas gatherings and things like that. It's like, it's happening and people don't even realize it. People that are calling themselves woke AF are engaging in those fights and they don't even realize that you guys are fucking blind as shit because you don't even yeah. know you're turning into monkeys right now, throwing shit at each other and gathering around this circle of fire, calling yourself left or calling yourself right or team blue, team red. It's fucking retarded, yeah. man. Like you, right. this in, is... in order to in, <laughs> in order to throw shit at your opponent, you have to pick up shit. So exactly. when you're throwing, you're getting dirty yourself. And, you know, ultimately that, that's, that really is, um, you know, that's a lesson that I've learned not, not just in 2017, but over the years, 
is um, it, it, it's this is this is definitely true. When you act out in anger and hate and fear um, against something that you feel is wrong or there's some sort of injustice, a little you 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 take a little part of yourself away. You know, you 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 injure yourself, you hurt yourself a little bit when you when you act out in a hostile, aggressive uh, way. It's towards, like when Palpatine others. triggered Luke to strike him, he was getting angry. And Palpatine was like, hey, 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 yeah, 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 welcome to the dark side. You know, he was right, right, tricking him into being angry to kill him so he could be in a dark side. It's exactly what's happening today with people where they feel like they're fighting for the right side. Everybody does, right? And they get angry and they use shitty tactics to fight and argue. And little by little, they're being dragged into the mud and they're being the demon that they're fighting. And it's what's happening. Yeah. It's what happened to me. And, you know, thank God I had the awareness to snap out of it. But, I mean, a lot of people don't. And who knows? I could still be, in many ways, in those piles of mud in, in different aspects of my life. But as long as There's you many, have some yeah, awareness to sorry. pull yourself out of it, you know, like you have to. Right. Yes. A hundred percent. I mean, we're, we are, we're not taught uh, from an institutional angle on a mass mass level uh, the mainstream child is not taught how to use their mind. You're not taught the how child. to be hashtag. <laughs> yeah, main, hashtag mainstream child. <laughs> Yo, what's up, mainstream child? Oh, mainstream child. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why that just made me laugh a lot. Hashtag <laughs> mainstream <laughs> child. Um, oh, man. The masses of the mainstream youth we're, you know, we're not, it's, it's, you know, the, the failure is upon the society in which we live in, in this present modern day where we do not have a group of wise old elders in order to guide us and to show us the ways of the universe and the cosmos and the language of love and everlasting eternity and living, living with myth and meaning and, and, and archetypes. And instead it's just chaos and, um, it, you know, programming is, is really what it is. And it's sad because we're, we, whatever, we, whatever these people who have inhabited these systems that we've created that are, that are carrying out these, these things on the, the young, we're doing it to ourselves. You know, it's, it's like, you know, we really are all of the same thing. And, you know, when, when we, when we do act out in these ways, uh, towards others, um, it, it is, it is acting out in, in negative ways, uh, towards our, our human brothers and sisters, you know, towards our, our, our own kin, you know, yeah. and, and, and that, that is, um, you know, that's a, that's a detriment to the species. You know, the, another big story, and I know we probably have to wrap soon, but another big story is in 2017 is the UFO thing. And, um, you know, I mean, my God, man, I mean, we, we, we're not going to be able to travel the intergalactic stellar, you know, universe and communicate with, with alien entities if we can't even get our shit together on this planet. You know, they're, they're not, they're not going to want to communicate with a bunch of petty social justice warrior alt-right bros you know it's like <laughs> stop let's start let's stop arguing with each other and let's come together as a human species and travel the cosmos forever you know what, man together. they're commuting communicating with me when i'm taking dmt for sure like like 100 percent, dude like i'm talking yeah, to them yeah and they're operating on me and implanting some woke ch chip into my brain and that's why we're able to spill out so much woke things on this podcast <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Maybe that's part of your job is to do that. Yeah. But yeah, I know what you mean, that's man. It's like it's like there's so much pettiness going on in the media and people like to focus on it because it's funny and it's outrageous and it's like, wow, is this the best we have to offer? You know, whether it's, it's the SJWs or the outright or whatever it might be. I mean, even like in other countries, you know, you want to talk about the U.S., fine, but let's talk about like North Korea. Let's talk about like Palestine. Uh, let's talk about the Middle East. Pakistan. Yeah, let's talk about Europe. Like people, right. 
you know, I just feel like the people that represent who humans are currently probably aren't doing the best job. So, you know, it's really up to us to exemplify the greatness of the human spirit in our everyday actions, you know, when yes, we see yes. the the poor granny really cold begging for money outside or when we see a little kid falling down or when we see suffering going on in the world, it's up to us to exemplify what we believe in. We don't have to depend on other people to show us the way. We know the way. Right. We know we right. have the Jedi manual. I mean, right. we, we have experienced the Jedi manual. So it's up to us to exemplify that and to put it into everyday use. Like that's the thing. Everybody wants to look at the authority and point to that person. Oh, they're not doing enough or they're not leading by example. Of course. They're just human beings, but it's also up to you. Like you're the most important person in your life. So what are you doing to lead by example? Stop pointing your finger yes. at other people. It doesn't matter who it is, right? It doesn't matter. But you have to point the finger back at yourself and be like, what am I doing today? What am I doing to make a difference? What are my quote unquote resolutions this year besides losing weight? Am I going to help out other people or am I going to make a difference in the world? Whether it's something you're really passionate in or saving yourself from the slavery pit that you're engaging in every day to make money. Like, are you going to make a difference to change something? Because yes, we could sit here all day and talk about how bad the system is and how they're enslaving people and things like that. But as long as we keep engaging ourselves in that system, we're part of the system, man. We're part right, of that system. Right. So what you're doing is you're going to Peru for four months and you're going to disengage for a while and come back with some new shit. Like I'm going to, I'm actually going to move back to Hawaii for a few months. And this year I've quit my job and I finished a yoga teacher training. So I'm going to, teach yoga for a little bit who knows how that's going to go but oh, nice. i'm choosing to disengage from the things that are making me unhappy to make a difference in myself and hopefully people will see that and follow themselves and make a difference in their own universe and i think that ultimately right. that's the only way that you can empower yourself is through fucking action man is through there there it is right there it's through doing it. yeah i was i was about to say it and you said it i was like you know, whatever you just said there, Ed, is super empowering to the people listening. Like, take what Ed just said and, and you know, heed every word of it because that is really – that's that's where the magic happens. That's where you become – you know, you become the hero of your own journey, of your own story. Like, you're living the hero's journey myth, like yourself, in your own life. You're slaying the dragon. You're getting the gold. You know, you're saving the princess. You know, you're doing all that stuff by choosing to walk the path that is uh in alignment with your own heart's desire and with your own with your with you know with your mission uh whatever that may be and you know what it there's sacrifice that comes along with that too you know what i mean if you're working a job and you're unhappy or if you're in a relationship and you're unhappy you know if it's not feeling right to you stop moving in that direction go for a radical change because you know, it might be uncomfortable at first and you might run into um, some pitfalls and things like that. But ultimately, I know this for a fact, when you start making decisions that are in alignment with what your true gut uh, instinct is, what your true feelings are, you know, like Joseph Campbell says, doors will open where there were only walls before. You know, the synchronicity will happen. Events, people will come to your aid. Things, situations will present themselves. In time, that will happen. And and another thing, another point to what you said is that, you know, yeah, I mean, like we can blame, you know, the the archons or the, uh, you know, the, the demiurge or whatever. We can blame all these things. But ultimately, if we're keeping that in mind that there is still kind of that that larger fight out there but acting on a local level to just be nice to your like niece and nephew or be nice to your brother and sister or be nice to your mom and dad take take the garbage out or something at night or like clean you know room. uh <laughs> clean your yeah clean your room or like you know wash your car wash your mom's car or whatever you know just do do you know give give the homeless guy on the street like a hot thing a soup or something what if you can do little charitable acts of kindness out of the out of the out of the out of your pure you know 
goodness, like genuine, you genuinely want to do these things, not doing them because you think you're going to score brownie points, but just doing them because in the act of doing them, you're actually uh, changing the world, you know? Yeah. You're, well said. You are. Man. It's not going to be easy at first, you know, because there's going to be changes and it's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. But I think at the end, it's going to be worth it because you're following what your heart tells you to do and it feels right. And as long as you work hard towards that, it's not just like, oh, quitting your job and I'm a yoga teacher now. Oh, 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 namaste. It's not like that at all. It's fucking hard work, man. And you have yeah. to work really hard towards your goal and what your image of your life should be. And as long as you keep putting on the work every single day and you keep grinding, things will pay out ultimately. And not only yeah. in this incarnation, but you're also gather good brownie points for good karma. So your next incarnation will be fucking badass as well. <laughs> so yeah, right. Exactly. Like, like when I, when I mentioned the synchronicity things, like it's like, you know, there is this cosmic, in, you know, web that like binds us, binds every act and every movement and every word that you say, it's all bound by this like cosmic ledger, you know? And, um, if you're acting in accordance with like your truth in that ledger, it's pretty awesome. It, it, things just, just work out better. And, and you know, it, you don't have to do it, you know, because somebody's watching, you just do it because that's the thing to do. I don't know. You know, it's just, if, if that's, maybe there's some evil bastards listening right now that's like, Hey, the thing to do is to fucking chop someone's head off. Well, you know, if that's your thing to do, I mean, maybe don't do that. Maybe go seek help. But you know, if the thing to do is to help, uh, help someone across the street, you know, somebody needs some help, go and do it, you know, do that thing, you know? Um, but anyway, I think, I think, I think I've said enough, uh, th that I could, that I could muster up to say any, any final closing thoughts uh ed on this 2017 wrap-up show yeah i feel like 2017 has been a great year for myself and also this podcast and learned many great things man and i feel like this alliance that we have on the podcast also came out of 2017 so that's pretty awesome oh yeah that's and also right, yeah. met a lot of people in 2017 that listen to the podcast they email me or instagram message me and things like that and I feel like there's hope out there for 2018 yeah. and uh, I'm really looking forward to 2018 and what it has to offer. I know there's going to be a lot of changes for myself and also you and I can't wait to come to the challenge of those changes because it's going to be challenging. It's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult, but nothing worth it is easy. So, you know, I'm ready for the challenges and I'm ready to rock and roll so i want to wish everybody listening a happy new year and hope you guys will also have great things in in mind for 2018 a lot of people ask me like oh what is your plan for your podcast for 2018 and i'm like for the podcast i don't have any specific new plans but my mentality is going to be keep grinding and keep making this thing big. And I think consistency, I guess, is the theme that I want to have in 2018 because I feel like the podcast, it's doing pretty well and um, people are enjoying it. It's just a matter of getting the word out there, letting people know more about the podcast and letting psychonauts around the world know more about the show. So the more we do these podcasts, the more we push it, you know, the more people are going to listen. And, um, yeah, I think 2017 has been a year of growth for me and that's the, that's where I want to stay, you know, for now, I want to keep growing. Do you have any plans to do, I know some people do things like, you know, consult the I Ching or do some kind of divination work or something yeah, like maybe. that like, to kind of predict like maybe what will happen in 2018, try maybe set an intention, do some kind of ceremony where you're going to set an intention, visualize and kind of, you know, do you have any plans to do anything like that? I think the intention for 2018 is continue to grow because I really like to improve and grow. That's where I am the happiest, you know, when there is room for improvement and I'm achieving those improvements. It's like getting a new badge when you play a video game. It makes me really happy. Yeah. And when I make improvements, 
day by day, month by month, it really makes me happy. And, and it shows me that I'm going somewhere, you know, there's progress. And maybe I'll have Sarah McAllister on, who I've had on before on the podcast, who is a tarot reader. Maybe I'll have mm. her read into the new year, 2018, who knows. But, you know, ultimately, I don't really believe in all that too much because I believe in myself. You know, I believe in right. the power that's within myself and what I'm able to create from my own hands. Of course, I believe there's destiny as well, but... I think we are able to change it if we're strong enough, you know, and if we're determined enough, we are able to make things happen without the E chain telling us that we can, you know, right. and I actually yeah, yeah, did wanna, like, yeah. I was in Japan yeah. and, uh, I was at this monastery, um, and it was, it wasn't really a monastery, but it was like a, a hike and in the hike, there was a lot of those gates, those red gates, the Japanese iconic red gates. And, it takes like a few hours to go up that mountain, but throughout the, the hike, it was all those gates and uh, it was really iconic and they worship the deity of the fox there. And I was at this place where they had these little foxes here on camera oh, cool. and you pull the tail out. And it gives like you a like cat. A, yeah. yeah. It looks like a cat here, but it's actually a fox. But oh, um, wow. yeah, when you pull out the now. string and it gives you a little fortune and it tells you what you should do and things like that. And my fortune was not bad. It was pretty good. So, you know, that's a great, great way to start the new year. How about you? Yeah. Yeah, no, I did. Uh, I did the um, I Ching um, uh, pulled like no, the numbers. I forgot exactly what I what I did. But I remember I remember the message was basically like, uh, a lot of challenges ahead, you know, yeah. um, that's a good thing. A lot man. of work. Challenges. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of work to be done. I always, that's like, I always get that. I never get, I always get like, <laughs> I'm going to be challenged a lot. I'm going to be tested a lot. I'm going to have a lot of work to do. And it's crazy. It's pretty crazy because my life has gone that way. I mean, people looking outside at my life who know me probably think that I'm just a, a crazy chaotic mess, you know, because, you know, for a while I was like, you know, this is the thing. No, 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 wait, this is the thing. And then it was like, stand up comedy is my thing. And then it's like, okay, now the political show is my thing. And then it's like this podcast. And now it's like, I'm going to Peru. So people might think that I'm just kind of like one of these wanderlusts, you know, people, but there's been sort of a, an unraveling journey throughout this, you know, whole thing, this whole, yeah. my whole life. So yeah, I'm always faced with new challenges and I keep, keep moving towards, the uncomfortable and the new and the novel and the, you know, the mysterious and just, um, diving straight in and, uh, having faith in, in, in myself that I'll be able to handle what lies ahead and I won't crack under the pressure. I won't crack under the, uh, the power of what I'm going to get myself into, you know? Well, that's the hero's journey. And also that's what makes a good movie. You know, there's no star Wars without a fight. So if Star right. Wars, if Luke Skywalker got what he wanted, then there wouldn't be a movie. So, you know, this is yeah. what life is about. It's about challenges and overcoming challenges and being in a moment during those times and being grateful, being reflective and overcoming your shadows and, you know, things like that. Good things like that. But what did you, what did you do to yeah. I Ching? Yeah. Uh, I just did an app. <laughs> <laughs> It, it kind of it, it what app is this? Like, it kind of sounds like lame, but like <laughs> it was. Um, I, I was expecting something online. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Somebody told me uh, about it, and I forget. Was it the exactly. I Ching, the Book of Changes? It might be. Yeah, is it a free one, yeah. or did you pay five ninety nine for it? No, I did not pay for it. Okay, I, I do not. Pay for, I don't pay for things. <gasps> it's, um, a, it's a book, though, right? This thing this app yeah yeah so um yeah so i'm looking at it right now um it's number 59 number 33 uh dispersion and retreat accept what is balance light and dark come out strong um something else there was another message there okay so I'm I'm, sure i have that, it right yeah. now i'm actually gonna yeah, draw a live yeah. on the air is it okay oh wow okay yeah go ahead yeah okay 
Yeah, please. Meanwhile, I said earlier, I don't believe in this stuff. I don't believe in the system. I believe in myself. And now I'm fucking consulting the I Ching online on an app. Yeah, consult. <laughs> so for yeah. people listening, there's three coins here. And it says, tap the coin six times to consult the I Ching. Okay. Wait, hold on. I just tapped it. Okay, let me do it again. Okay. Okay, so I got I got two numbers only. Um, wait, let me start over. Okay, six times. Okay, I got twenty-two and thirty-seven. What is twenty-two? Twenty-two is grace. Wow. Inside, the strength of simplicity and self-knowledge. Outside, the beauty of acceptance and gentleness. That's cool, man. That's really cool. Okay, what did I get? The second, thirty-seven is my second one. The family, apprentices, the clan, a healthy family, a healthy country, a healthy world, all grow outward from a single superior person. And there's like a long explanation here. That's cool, man. So I got the great, I got grace and the family. That's really cool. Nice. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> to be, to be honest with you. Well, yeah, I mean that's why I asked you though, because there's a lot of things that you can do. There's a lot of like, you know, tests and 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 you know, magic that I still don't understand, but uh, um, I'm I'm wanting to learn about, you know, because yeah. I, you know, I started off this podcast talking about how I don't really give a shit, but you know, it doesn't nothing means anything. It's but. This 2017 has definitely been a year that has taught me that uh, that symbols mean things and they have power and yeah. uh, you know numbers and language. It's it actually is very important. They do mean things. They're not. It's not trivial. And um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of good that can come out of um, uh, doing doing uh, sorts of ritual type of things you know and 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 what i mean by ritual type of things is um with ayahuasca for example when i'm drinking ayahuasca uh down in peru the ceremonial setting is so important you know it's it it kind of gives you can't you know you can't extract ayahuasca and put it into a pill and and import it to a western you know medical facility you're, you know, you're missing the entire ceremonial aspect of it, the tobacco and the maestros and the maestras and the ikaros, the song and the, the sitting in circle and the candles and, um, the intention that you're setting and the power that you're giving to the intention, you know, going into a ceremony, wanting to gain something or learn something. So, um, yeah, that's that's another kind of bonus that I wanted to throw in there of 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 learning that I got from 2017, you know, symbols yeah. and and the power in them, magic, real magic. Yeah, I learned that too, man, and it's an important thing for me now and I'm continuing to develop that aspect and I'm hoping to have more people on to talk about symbols and archetypes and those things where I find it really interesting the more I read Carl Jung or Joseph Campbell and other books that talks about these things. I'm more fascinated about these subjects. And, you know, before I thought it was really cheesy and, you know, right. trivial, like you said, to have these things. But now I feel like, man, this is a part of the human story and we should honor that. Yeah. You know, we should really yeah. Yeah. invite that aspect into our lives because it holds a lot of power. So, but anyways, yeah, yeah let's wrap it up. Um, I want to thank everybody listening to our podcast, whether it's Psychedelic Milk or Mycadelic. Again, a lot of changes coming to our personal lives this coming year. So rest assured, our podcast would be, I guess, consistently <laughs> similar, the same. Um, although you yeah. might hear a lot more different insights and things that we learned along the way. Rest assured, we're still going to be doing podcasts and um, these dual casts like this. So um, nothing to worry about in that department. But pray for our lives because there will be changes. <laughs> pray. Oh, pray. yeah. Big, 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 <laughs> big time changes. And, uh, of course, you know, follow me at Mike Brank at Mikeadelic underscore podcast on Instagram. My Instagram account for the podcast is new. 
brand new. I used to just have a personal account and I, and I was pretty big on Twitter. I had built, I built up my Twitter following at Mike Brank, B R A N C. And, um, but I, I, I don't like using Twitter so much anymore and I'm trying to build up my Instagram. So if you guys like what I have to say and, you know, want to continue listening and check out my podcast, Mike Adelic, um, and go follow me on Instagram, everyone out there. Uh, and, uh, it's Mike Adelic underscore podcast. Boom. Mike Adelic underscore yeah. podcast and follow me on Instagram at psychedelic milk. We have some amazing, funny memes every yeah. single day. <laughs> or you can follow my personal account at Real Ed Liu, where I get really zen and meta with my photography, which I love. And uh, yeah, I really like th- those are the two contrasts. And my personal account is really meta, and I post like Joseph Campbell quotes and things like that. And I post my own actual photography that I like as a hobby very much. And on my psychedelic milk account, it's memes and funny stuff and trigger triggering people and whatnot sometimes. <laughs> Although not as much these days, but <laughs> anyways, glad to have you guys listening. Um hope everybody has an amazing start to the new year and we'll be seeing you guys soon in twenty eighteen. Ciao. Happy New Year. Peace. Hey, hope you guys enjoyed that show. I always love talking to Ed. Going to miss him when I'm in Peru and we don't have a chance to communicate. But you guys will be getting full disclosure from me on my travels. And we have some amazing podcasts lined up for 2018. I just have a feeling this is going to be a great year. All right, I'm going to play you guys out with one of my favorite songs from this past year from one of my favorite bands, The War on Drugs, Thinking of a Place, from the album A Deeper Understanding. Enjoy.
Once I had a dream I was falling from the sky Coming down like running water Passing by myself in life In the morning I would wake to the sound of someone's voice Like little whispers through the sun Turns me into you. 